to the Entrepreneurial CPA Show. In case you missed our live webinar series on the Evolution of Advisory, don't worry about it. You can check out here what you missed. This episode is all about how you can go gig, learn from thought to action, and get started in this process. Bring lean, bring efficiencies to your clients and your firm. So let's check it out, and I hope you enjoy. And with that, I'm happy to announce our next guest. We've got Oren Wilson here. He's a partner with Thought to Action. His team focuses on just that, helping business owners down, lay down a streamlined, scalable structure to improve their processes and efficiencies. Another great gig resource you can deploy for your clients or at your firm. So, Oren, thanks for being here today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I had to, I had to ditch the... <laughs> the other headphones they were making my ears a little warm so i went from looking <laughs> like a, i was on a land party to like a hipster dark vader or something it's all right we're gonna we're gonna allow it i got i got Darth vader in the background so we don't we don't mind <laughs> all right we're good then <laughs> so tell us a little about thought to action and what you guys can do to help business owners be successful yeah well uh, a lot of what we do is based we um i'm also a partner with a another CPA firm. So we're able to kind of implement these things and we use ourselves as a guinea pig for a lot of the stuff we've done in the past. But uh, basically we come in and standardize all of your workflow workflow processes. Um, we try to build a learning system that contains a knowledge base to work from and enable the system to continuously refine as we go. And so we'll take a look at things like uh, your organization. And so what standards do you have in place? Uh, how accessible are your resources, how mobile are they, and um, how do they refine themselves, or are they set up to do so? Uh, and so it's really kind of the back end, like you're saying, as far as the gig economy, we're, what's the ideal firm that we're looking to move toward? Uh, and in my head, it's something that's flexible, that doesn't require you know, a tremendous workload on me. Um, it's something that's mobile that I can manage from my phone, so you know, I can go on a vacation and still be technically working. But it's something that's also streamlined and scalable to the point that we have so much excess uh, production capacity that then we can bring in all these other services. And so if you're loading in all these compliance and commoditized services like the bookkeeping and you know the tax returns and things like that down, then we can fill that space with all these advisory solutions. And so that's what um, we're trying to help these firms do because that's always the hard part or the questions we get, you know, people was like, oh yeah, let's move to advisory. Okay, what, I mean, how, how do we do that? I'll just stop doing what I'm doing here and just go start advising people. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not real practical. And so the things that we put into place at these firms and manage for them uh, basically creates a machine that operates in the background and takes care of all these compliance type engagements or the commoditized engagements so that that is really just supporting your um, ideal engagements. And so you move into that, um, move more into those advisory or fully comprehensive plans. You're still taking care of the bookkeeping or the payroll or the tax returns, but you know you have monthly meetings set up with more uh, managerial concerns, things that drive decisions and profitability. Uh, and so that, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we get to see it with people. We get to see it uh, on our firm side and I think, Garrett, we've talked about it before, this next tax season, we're actually looking to take a, I don't know if you'd call it a vacation, but kind of a um, team building session to Hawaii in the middle of tax season, uh, just because, you know, I can manage it from my phone. It's not something that's, a, you know, stressing my mind or anything like that. I like the sound of that. I think uh, tax season vacation in Hawaii sounds like a perfect piece. And yeah, you're onto something there. Me and Dr. Sean talk about that a lot. Of, to move to advisory, we need to do the compliance work better, faster, easier to free up our people. And that's why when we talk about the gig economy, whether it's helping you with that compliance piece or it's someone like Beach Valley where it says when you get to the advisory side, in the advisory world as well, we don't need to do everything. If I can plug in Beach Valley for one of our clients because they need this, this high and big four talent, plug it in there, it's a win-win for everybody. I don't need to try and take one of my people, spend a month training them on IFRS, the new revenue standards, and then hopefully they can apply it to my client in the best way. I called Josh and, and in two days, the client's got the best person for the IFRS analysis. And then there's no time off my plate. I streamed up that process. Um, Dr. Sean, what do you think? Yeah, I, and uh, Oren made some excellent points in there, right? The, the, because the first point, 
is that I don't think anybody likes doing, you know, bank recs, AP, AR, accounts. I know I was hated doing that, right? When I was working in uh, industry, I was hated doing that stuff. But I mean, all of that work, payroll, your tax reporting, all of that stuff, it does have to get done. And, and it does add some value, right? Because how can you possibly give, you know, higher level advice or services if the underlying data is inaccurate, incomplete, or or uh, just gone wrong, right? So the first step towards actually getting up to that higher level sort of a business partner role that that all of us talk so much about. I mean, those those uh, baseline tasks do do uh, so have to get done, and they have to get done well, right? right. And and so that first step of actually automating those those processes is so important. I know because um, I know that uh, one of the areas that I deal with is with entrepreneurs, right? Folks that are just starting out. And really one of their key issues or pain points is that, okay, fine. Uh, I want to automate stuff, right? AI is everywhere, right? So so, so what they want to do is to automate everything, right, up front. But, but you can't automate a bad process and then have it become a excellent process, right? So actually having those conversations, you know, hiring experts like Oren's firm, and then having them come in to work with you to help improve your process, automate it, and then everybody has more time, right? Us and our end users have that extra time to actually you know, you know, plan and to think and, and to actually grow, as opposed to wasting time, you know, doing a bank recs, APs, and on the hunt for information. Yeah, so right. with that, how do you kind of start working with a company or a firm to, to standardize and streamline their processes? Well, we put a lot of emphasis on the evaluation stage of things. Um, we try to, basically we come in and implement a continuous improvement cycle. And so that starts with problem identification. And it's kind of funny, one of the things, and this is true personally as well, um, one of the things that keeps us from solving problems at our firm or in our life is we don't start with the idea that maybe the problem is my fault or I could have prevented it. And so, yeah, without starting with that, it, you just kind of only go from that stage back to, okay, well, I'll try to change this over here, this over here, and this over here, and it never works. But once we get into the evaluation, we work through a lot of things like you know, bottleneck analysis, you know, real simple, um, basically just leading questions that allow the clients to answer them in a way that, oh, well, this could do this and um, that would fix that. And then, you know, SWOT analysis, where you're really, we're trying to map your entire system because the only things that are going to kill us in this process are the ones we don't know about. And so we try to map out every bit of information that we can um, so we run through, you know, problem identification, evaluations. We then analyze all that data to see, okay, how do we change things that are in the best interest? We have a primary key we use to go by when we're changing a lot of these processes. And if it adheres, if it adheres to the primary key, we move forward with it. Um, after that, we develop out a strategy and then work through the implementation. And then it just repeats itself over and over and over again. That's one of the things I, <laughs> I have a lot of fun when uh, some of our clients will say, well, you know, this this is failing and this. It's like, yes, because we've provided you with visibility into what's actually going on. We want it to fail because then you can correct it and move forward. If things aren't failing, it's because you don't know what's going on. And it's just blissful ignorance. Yeah. No, I really like that because you're right. It's In their process now, things are failing constantly. They're just not aware of those failures when they take place. You know, um, talking about lead and lag indicators, and our next guest loves to talk about that. Um, you know, they're seeing those lag indicators later on of, okay, there's a this tax return is not done in time, or this widget is not made right, and the customer complains six weeks later. That is really helpful. What you're giving them is that lead of, oh, no, there's a breakdown immediately in the process. Something happened. You can fix it now and catch it versus waiting six weeks, and you've made – 50 widgets wrong. Yeah. Right. No, and, yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent point because really I, I, the true value or the whole point of all this automation is to then help us help our clients actually run their business better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I've got a perfect example of it too, because 
I mean, I've told you we apply this on our CPA group side as well. And just the other day, um, I picked up another client that I'll be doing work for, and it's going to, their fee is going to be about 10 times what a typical bookkeeping fee would be, but it's only going to require probably an hour of my time a month, something like that. And it's because we built all of this stuff in in the past, and this is what we're doing for a lot of the clients too. And so going back to the gig and the advisory stuff, you know, if you're looking to do uh, outsource controller role or just even, you know, advisory that um, being that advisor that people pull in, you know, things that are, in my mind, more enjoyable as a CPA, that's the real value you can add to companies is helping them be successful. And so our processes and kind of developing out this structure for the company just allows it to be a machine running in the background while you then just use your knowledge and your skill to go help the clients. So speaking of that, one of the things you just said made me think about, you know, lean processes, the analysis, mapping this out. Why do you think it is and what's your advice on firms and businesses that say, well, why don't I just do it myself? What do I need to leverage the gig economy and bring somebody in? What are the benefits of bringing in the expert to help them with that? Right. Uh, well, one of the things we try to help you do as well, if if this becomes, you know, if this comes up, is we map out your value per hour. Uh, most people think of their, you know, their billable rate per hour as how much that time is worth. Um, but if you think about the typical activities that a partner or owner or somebody like that is going to be introduced to, it's going to be with client development or, uh, you know, these different areas that if you calculate them out, the value per hour might be at 650 an hour rather than the 200. But even at the billable rate per hour, do you really have the time to go and fix all of these things when you're, okay, think about it this way. You're starting, you're starting in a mess, right? You're putting out fires everywhere. You're just living from fire to fire. Is there really the time to go do this? What, what we've seen is that people will try this and then get distracted by the next fire. And then it, whatever it is, they have, un, they have broken projects all over the place. And so it never actually gets done. What we do, we come in and we have, uh, you know, a set timeline, set schedule of how we go in and restructure things. And so it's happening while then you can apply your your value uh, per hour elsewhere. And you don't even have to worry about it because it's going on in the background and fixes itself. I like that. I mean, that sounds like it's the process because it's going to be a lot of work trying to figure it out by yourself. And, yeah, it's why part of the gig economy. It's not just side hustles. It's legitimate resources to empower your firm, your organization to grow. Sometimes you use them internally. Sometimes you're able to pass them on to your clients to be that rock star that you couldn't do right now. I mean, I think, you know, so Dr. Sean, what questions do you have for Orrin and what he's doing with lean processes? No, no. <laughs> uh, <Right. laughs> probably the, the sort of top question that, that I have is probably what's the most common obstacle that you and your firm and your and your uh, your staff have to sort of overcome so to get that uh, to sort of have this conversation going and uh, I'm only asking because as somebody who is heavily involved in the you know IT side of things I mean a a issue and a topic that is that that is very important is actually how much data as a company am I handing off right to some external party right so right. then what uh, what uh, processes are, are in place to keep everybody, one, uh, up to date on the actual data sharing, and then two, to address any issues that could arise? Right. Uh, well, in a lot of this, as far as the data sharing and things like that, it's more, uh, what would you call it? It'd be almost the same situation if an IT group came in and built, a, built out a server platform or upgraded you to a cloud solution. Uh, because that's how a lot of the solutions we build in are, you know, they're all cloud-based. They're made to where they're accessible from, uh, you know, pretty much anywhere. You can share links or share documents or let clients load things to where they need to be. Uh, and then the workflow software, it's all fully integrated to all the different systems you're using. So from that standpoint, it's thought more of as a tech project. And then the rest of it comes down to structure and scheduling. You're just managing timelines and... Uh, you know, checkpoints and um, getting progress updates. It's not actually 
just pouring through different types of data. It's more just using it as it's kind of like the zeros and ones. You know, you're just getting in information and putting it in the right place. Yeah, yeah, no, and and I think that point right there is very important, right? Because as as really accounting and and IT sort of merge into one, I do think it's a good thing to think of the actual processes and the policies and our underlying sort of systems in place as items that can and also should be built on right to help us uh, and our and our clients be more efficient with our time and our information so right and I think the pro I'm going back to your first part of the question the problem we encounter the most is you have people who realize a change is needed but are still resistant to a lot of the ideas because they're so drastically different from what they're used to and so we've gone to great lengths to put together illustrations training packets things to, <laughs> to really just the, it's almost whole cartoonish in a way yeah it's like this is how this process works and why it's successful um and then you can start bringing people along because usually it's one it'll be one partner who's like yeah we need these changes you know we need uh, this kind of stuff to go on and everybody else is like yeah i don't know about this i don't <laughs> think this is gonna work yeah, yeah. and so yeah, they're pulling uh, the whole uh yeah the whole firm behind them yeah right and then <laughs> but it it ends up coming back to not really bite, but people soon realize that when they operate outside of the system, things will start to go wrong. And when people come back and clarify what happened, it's because they were operating outside of the system. Yep. Interesting. No, Aaron, I, Aaron, I appreciate it. So we got 30 seconds left. Any final notes you want to wrap up on? I just say, um, you know, for any of your viewers to kind of give you an idea of this, we've got a uh, accounting firm growth and improvement playbook and if you you can go to our website at thought2act.com the number two and go to the contact info and just say I want the playbook or you can just email us at info at thought2act.com and I'll just you know we'll have that sent over to you so you can kind of get started on things it's not the full playbook but it's the evaluation portion I like that I like that a little freebie going out to the audience which is perfect thanks for tuning in today I hope you all learned something from Thought to Action. You want to take that next step to improving your processes, your procedures. If you have questions, reach out to Dr. Sean or myself. We'll help you get started. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube tube channel to stay up to date. And as always, we challenge you to take action today to change the world and invest in yourself.